Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marianne Cavasso and in today's video we are going to be talking about how you can pass general chemistry 1 and 2. So I recently just finished up this like pair of classes, I guess you'd call it. Call it what you want, yeah, call it what you want to. And I thought I'd share all of my tips and tricks and the things that I did to pass both classes with high A's. Yes, I did that. And you would do it too for a check. So the first and biggest tip that I have is to actually go to class. I think a lot of students who don't pass a class is because they're not coming to class consistently. The bottom line is no one's coming. At least for me, my classes, both 1 and 2, were Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they were an hour long. So while it is kind of a hassle as a college student to get to class and actually make sure that you're paying attention in class, it is very important that you are at least present so that you can you know, hear the material and hear the lectures. Then the second tip is to actually do something in class. Get your up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. So you don't necessarily have to take notes during class, but it wouldn't be wise to just go to class and be on your phone or be on your computer doing whatever. At least do something to actively engage in the lecture. So if you find that you're not a note person, maybe trying to ask questions as the professor is speaking. Can I ask you a question? so that you can kind of try to process um. the material as you're in class. Now for me personally, what I did involves regurgitating what the professor is saying into my own vernacular. And what? Instead of just writing down exactly what's on the slides, in class, I am actually trying to process what the professor is saying into words that I can understand. And then you can turn what you said into then questions to study. So it's all like connected. I actually stole this from a creator on TikTok. If I find her at, I will put it here. And the biggest tip, this is the third tip, but it's pretty big is to find a study buddy slash a class partner this saved me in general chemistry one so this is just someone who you can bounce ideas off of, talk to about the homeworks, quiz each other, you can study together, and it makes it so much easier to understand material when you have someone else that's doing it with you. And General Chemistry 1 was a breeze because I had that study buddy class partner. That if I didn't understand something, maybe she understood it and she could explain it to me in a different way than what the professor did. So that's another way that I could reinforce content for myself or learn content that I didn't necessarily pick um. up from class and it's just really nice I recommend this for any class but specifically for general chemistry 1 and 2 it is very important that you have someone there to help you especially a peer because it's just easier to talk with a peer and ask questions work with a peer to pass this class so now after you take your first test or exam this is where you'll really do a lot of evaluating to figure out what worked for you and then what didn't work and then trying to change it to better prepare for the next test and exam. You might realize that your professor was very test heavy on equation problems rather than practical problems or definitions and fill in the blank questions. So you might want to study more on that gear because there's equations in chemistry, but then there's also, you know, terms and definitions that you need to know. And some teachers test more on equations and actually applying the concepts while other teachers are more focused on making sure that you understand the definitions. And then some teachers are hybrid of both. But after the first test or exam then you'll a example of what this teacher likes to test on and that way you can better prepare for next exams on the topic of exams now we can talk about my study method for exams in general chemistry one and two so for both classes i would start studying for tests and exams about a week out and i know you might be like whoa that's a long time or maybe you might be like that's not enough but i feel like a week is pretty good because it gives you time that you don't have to study every single day but if you study every single day for the week leading up to the exam you'll have a pretty solid amount of studying time for the exam so for me i would do anywhere from one to four hours of studying a day but i consider studying to also be like doing homeworks and redoing homeworks and reviewing homeworks and i just recently made a video on how i study so if you want to get a more in-depth tutorial on how i study you can go watch that but yeah i'd study for one to four hours and then studying would usually start with me reviewing the notes and the homeworks from that unit and then once i finished doing all the reviews 
review and I've caught up on notes because sometimes I'd be behind on note taking, then I would go into doing practice problems because chemistry is very equation heavy. Like there's a lot of equations that you need to know in both general chemistry one and two. There's some formulas and elements and things that you need to memorize. So that's what I do during this part of my study. And then the last part of my studying is just to memorize any definitions or any, you know, fill in the blank things that might be asked during the test and any like final things that I feel like I need to know for the unit. And that's kind of how I would study for every exam. And I did, I did pretty well on most of my general chemistry one and two exams. Now, like I have stated a little bit before is it's really important to ask questions in class and go to office hours if needed. So I think a big thing that I saw with a lot of students in both my general chemistry one and two classes is that a lot of people were like very hesitant to ask questions in class or even go to professor's office hours even if they did need help even if they didn't understand the material they weren't willing to ask questions or go to office hours and I even talked with my professor about this and he was like yeah like it's people like they want to pass the class but then they don't want to ask questions they don't want to come to office hours they don't want to make the effort to at least try to understand what is going on you know so I, th that's why it's my tip for you if you want to pass the class at least you know ask questions in class. Most professors that I've taken, they will have something like this. They will lecture for a bit. They'll be like, blah, blah, blah. This is valence electrons. And they'll explain what valence electrons are. And then they will be like, have any questions? And if you don't understand it, or maybe you feel like you need another explanation, this is the time when the professor says, does anyone have any questions for you to ask? Hey, I didn't really understand that. Could you go over it one more time? Or hey, what was this about this part? I didn't really get that, you know? And just making sure, because class time is really the time for you to at least get a slight handle on the material. You don't need to like perfect and memorize everything in the one to three hours that you're in class, but you do need to take the time to at least get a semi handle on what is like what you were taught in class. You don't have to perfect it, but you need to know it a little bit. And then my last, but really the biggest tip, oh, I said that like three times, but all these tips are super valuable in passing general chem one and two. Use your online resources. YouTube, Khan Academy, etc. All of those are there to help you succeed. There are so many great resources on YouTube and Khan Academy that you can use to pass any class, but there's a wealth of knowledge out there. And if you are not looking things up to try to find another way of understanding something when you don't get it, you're just doing it wrong. Like for instance, for my general chemistry two class, we had a big set of homework problems to do from Alex. He didn't want us to do it on the platform. He wanted us to show our work and do it all by hand. But the wording of the questions with Alex, if you have ever used it in general chemistry one or two, you'll know that the wording of the questions is very weird. It's different than how you might be used to seeing it or how your professor might ask it. So I went to YouTube and I immediately found so many great resources of people going through problems on Alex. And while they might have been not the exact problem that I needed, aka they didn't give me the answer, but they did show me how to solve this problem and the equation to use when I see this wording. And it was very helpful in that aspect. And yeah, that is basically how I did it. I went to class. I took notes in class. I studied well in advance for exams. I asked questions and went to office hours if I needed it. And then I used my online resources if anything else failed because the internet is there for me to use it and not fail, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. I respond to every single comment. And if you'd like to subscribe and join my little fam and my little group, my little click, then you are very welcome to do so. And I would love to have you as a part of my family Google click. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye. <laughs>